What's good, peeps? How's everyone doing? Um, hopefully everyone is doing very, very well. Uh, don't forget, if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, also, don't forget to like and share the vids. Um, it really does help the channel. Thank you very, very much. All right, let's, um, let's focus on this final fight card at Fight Camp. Um, what we'll do, actually, we'll focus more on... Um, on Dylan White Povetkin, I might do a separate video for Katie Taylor Pursuing. It is a world title fight, and I think it probably does deserve a separate video. So we will touch on the other fights very briefly, but I do want to look at um, Dylan White Povetkin in um, in a bit more detail. Um, this is a big fight. <laughs> it really is a big fight. Obviously, it's on pay per view. Um, it's a decent card. It could have been, I think, a bit tastier, but um, I'm just being greedy, but it could have been a bit tastier. But credit, massive credit, by the way, to um, to Dillian White for having this fight, right? Dillian White's in a position, sorry, but I was about to say position and situation together there. Uh, but Dillian White's in a situation or position where he's the WBC mandatory and he knows that next fight will be a big one and it is an important one. And he didn't have to take a fight of this magnitude. He could have done he could have done something like what Joe Joyce and what Daniel Dubois are doing where they're having a fight before they, they get it on. But it's just a kind of, um, it's almost a warm-up fight, right? It's a gimme fight. They're going to win. Um, he could have done that. Yes, it wouldn't have been on pay-per-view, but he still would have got paid something. Obviously not the kind of money he's getting now, but he would have got paid something. You don't take the risk. You just wait for the winner of Tyson Fury Wilder and you wait for what you've been waiting for, for however long you've been waiting for it. So credit to him for A, taking the fight, B, taking the pay cut to take the fight. Trust me, I know that for a fact, he's taken a big pay cut to take this fight. It's nothing like it would have been um, if they were to fight, when were they supposed to fight? May, April um, at Manchester Arena. It's nothing like that. So he's taken a pay cut to take the fight. So um, big credit to, uh, to Dillian White for doing that. Let's quickly... Um, before we talk uh, all about Pavet Kim White, let's quickly have a look at the card um, and do the usual scores on the doors. Um, Alan Babich is on the card. He's been Dylan White's sparring partner in Portugal. He's fighting uh, Shondell Winters, who's 13, 13 and 3. Alan Babich, by the way, is 3 and 0. That's not a gimme, you know, for. Um, I, I think Babich will win, but for a guy 3 and 0 to take on uh, Shondell. Winters, who's 13 and 3. No gimme. Lufa Clay versus Chris Gongo for the WBO, was it, Global Welterweight title. I don't know, is, that, is the British title on the line? I can't remember. But anyway, um, that's what belt is on the line. The WBA, WBO, sorry, Global Welterweight title. Lufa Clay is the current champion. Chris Congo is unbeaten, the contender. Um, this is a good fight. This is a good fight. Chris Congo obviously is a lot bigger, but Lufa Clay has fought the better opposition um, I think he's the better boxer technically and he's tough. He's tough. These kids from Eastern Cape, South Africa, trust me, I've, um, I've commentated on these kids for the last couple of years when I was in South Africa. They are tough. They are tough. And he's got that in him. Good fight. This one's been added to the card late. Uh, Jack Cullen versus Zach Chelly. Uh, Jack Cullen, 18 and two. Uh, Zach Chelly, seven and one. They were trying to get on Fabio Wardley on this card. He wanted to get on. They did try and get him on. Couldn't get him on. Uh, Katie Taylor versus Delphine Pursuing. We all know that it would have been or should have been um, Amanda Serrano. Some may say this is a better matchup. Some may say that. I feel like this could be the better fight. I think a better matchup is just for in terms of for glamour, maybe, and for the American DAZN market, maybe Serrano would have been better. But for what is going to be a scrap if Katie Taylor makes it a scrap. Sorry, if Delphine Pursuun makes it a scrap and Katie Taylor doesn't stamp her authority on this fight, uh, authority on this fight early, um, this could be a very, very good fight. Uh, and then obviously we've got the big one, Dylan White versus Povetkin. Um, isn't the diamond belts on the line? I have no idea why the diamond belts on the line, but oh well, okay. And obviously the uh, WBC, or interim WBC heavyweight title, so the mandatory shot is on the line as well. 
Um, so a very important fight. Um, the thumbnail, I wrote on the thumbnail, um, upset. And I also wrote no. Um, I asked the question just because this is a close fight. Like I always do my scores on the doors. In fact, scores on the doors for this card very quickly. Um, for a pay-per-view card, it's not great. It's not great, but it's it's okay. It's just, it's um, Katie Taylor Pursuing's a good fight. White Povetkin's a good fight. Um, Clay Congo. I think even Cullen's actually so it's decent. It's a, it's a seven. It's a seven, right? It is. It's a seven. Um, if it had what was supposed to be on it again, I can't remember. Bacoli Kuzman. Do you know what I mean? It, it goes up at maybe another point five or even maybe a one to eight. But for now, it's a seven. So back to Dylan White Povetkin. Um, I always give my percentage chance to the underdog. Um, I think this is a 70-30 fight. I'm, I'm thinking maybe 65-35, but I'm going to go 70-30 fight, obviously in the swing uh, to Dillian White. Um, but this is, this is a risky fight. It, it is a risky fight for Dillian White. Um, I've been watching little clips and only little clips of Dylan White in Portugal. Does look a lot lighter, um, which isn't which isn't I mean difficult considering he was like two hundred and seventy one pounds for Marius Vac. But he actually looks a bit lighter than even when he was fighting the likes of Oscar Rivas and Derek Chisora. So I'm very interested to see what weight he will come at. Um, the reason I'm interested is because I think we've started to see a different Dylan White. He's still. He still does go back to that kind of inside brawler mentality. But I think, especially in the Chisora fight, I felt like there were a few times where Dylan White would hang on the ropes and try to actually move a bit, try to use his jab and move. And I thought he was doing that. Although the scores were close before the knockout with Chisora, I actually felt it was a comfortable fight for Dylan White. And one where he would have been so upset if he lost that fight because it would, it looked comfortable. There was only a couple of times I thought Chisora brought the heat. But even when he did... Um, Dylan White knew how to respond and he responded well off the ropes um, I don't know if we're going to see a more moving Chisora I don't know if this is now how Chisora sorry how a more moving Dylan White I don't know if this is now how Dylan White evolves into a top top fighter right now I think he's a good fighter I don't think Dylan White's elite I think a Dylan White that can move and jab a bit can evolve into a much better guy and I do wonder if that's why the new trend has been brought in, just so we can see a bit more of that. We're used to seeing him brawl. We know he can do that. We saw it against Rivas. We saw it in the first fight, 110% against Chisora. We saw it against Parker. We, we've seen that. In order, I think, to be able to compete with um, AJ and Fury, and maybe to an extent Deontay Wilder, we need to see a bit more. We need to. So I'm very interested to see if we see a different Dillian White. Even in the videos of him um, coming into fight camp, so that the, wherever, that, that Brentwood Hotel, whatever, he does look a bit smaller. So I hope we do see um, a different Dillian White. He could be small because it's been a very long camp, right? I mean, he literally went to Portugal, I think, just when COVID was kicking off. So I think he might have been in Portugal since March. I'm going to say that. That's a four-month camp, four or five-month camp. That's a long, long camp. So it could just be a case of he's been in hot weather and he's just naturally started to, to shed a lot of weight. I hope it's because they're thinking of getting him on his toes and moving. Now, that process to turn it around from a guy that kind of uh, doesn't jump on his toes and move around to a guy that does is difficult. But I think they can do that and I hope they do do that. Um, as for Povetkin, look... A lot's been made about Povetkin's age. I, I, heavyweights are so different. I mean, look, obviously I'm not going to say you can go into 55. That's stupid. But forget that with heavyweights. The lower weight classes where you've got to make weight, that's what kills you. Yes, the punishment of fights and sparring kills you, but the making weight kills you. Hence why a lot of fighters eventually jump weight classes. Povetkin might be, what is he, 40, 41. But I saw him up close and personal against Michael Hunter, a young, fast, hungry Michael Hunter, who put it on him, put it on him hard in the first four or five rounds, and he turned it around. He was able to weather that storm, and it was a storm, it was a big storm. He was able to turn it around and do some things. 
in the end, people say he might have been lucky to get out there with a draw. I thought a draw was, was a fair result. There was even a point where I thought he was going to get rid of Hunter. I don't know what round it was. I thought Hunter was in big trouble. So I'm trying to say that Povetkin is still very much dangerous, especially if it's a Dillian White that stays in the pocket. If Dillian White stays in the pocket with Povetkin, then we, we all know Povetkin's got a left hook that will take a head off, right? Even go and watch the first couple of rounds against AJ. He hurt AJ a couple of times in that fight. He, he, this guy's a good fighter. Although that was, what, two years ago, he hurt AJ. This guy can still do damage. Um, so it, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Very, very interesting. I would edge towards white on points or a late stoppage, but I'm, I'm more thinking a, a points result. It's not easy to get rid of Povetkin, you know. It's not easy at all. Yeah, AJ did it. Super powerful. Um, that's it, right? Klitschko went to points, didn't it? So it ain't easy. It ain't easy. Um, Povetkin for me is still a top 10 heavyweight. Um, and that's, th that's always interesting when I say things like that, just because it doesn't mean there aren't nine or 10 heavyweights that can beat him because I, I, I think they are. Like, for example, you could put him in right now with Dubois. Dubois might be able to beat him because of the power. Or even someone out, outside of that, like an FA Jaguar. There could be someone right now in the top 30 that can beat him that's not in the top 10. What it does mean, though, is that he's got a solid resume. He's been there. He's done it. He's 35 and 2. Out of that alone, he deserves to be in the top 10. He deserves to be. So um, it's an interesting fight, this one. Um, interesting. Like... Part of me thinks I'm happy to see a Dylan White that evolves, but at the same time, this isn't the opponent you, you want to pick to try out new things with. Do you know? Do, that makes sense, right? I mean, you try out new things with, um, no disrespect, guys like uh, Sefa Safiri or, or Pianetta that Fury fought in his comeback fights. You don't try out new things with this kid. You, you do not, right? The carrot that is dangling in front of Povetkin is a Fury payday or a Wilder payday or even because of this undisputed talk, an AJ rematch. That's the carrot dangling in front of him and that carrot is worth millions. I mean, he's coming to take Dillian White's head off and I feel like I was about to say I wouldn't be shocked if he does. I would be shocked, but I wouldn't, I'm not shocked if he hurts White in this fight. I'm, I'm not shocked at all. We've seen, even in the white wins, the Parker and the Rivas fight, he has been hurt, has been down. So I wouldn't be shocked, but I do expect this white to be fully focused, fully on it. Um, he's made the changes in his camp, he's made the changes in his team, and, and I expect to see a, a different white, a white that does move a bit, a white that, yes, we know can bang, we've seen that already, but a white that uses his jab. Um, again, these are the things I think he needs to improve on in order to compete with Fury and AJ and maybe even Deontay Wilder. Some people might disagree with that fully. I fully understand if you do. But um, yeah, it's going to be interesting, right? It's going to be interesting. Look forward to it. I really do look forward to it. Can't wait for this one. Uh, what do you guys think? Um, rounds, percentage, like swing, where are you? Do, you? do you think it's an easy night's work for White? Do you think Bavette can cause an upset? Um, Either way, credit to Dillian White as well for taking this fight. It's a good fight. Can't wait for it. Peace.